like to know, what do you think of the tsunami of suspensions and expulsions that are happening in the Labour Party at the moment? Well, I, I'm absolutely appalled by all these suspensions because I look at my own case. I, you had the then Labour MP, who's now been appointed the House of Lords by the Tories, uh, Tom Mann, um, arranges a, a TV crew to film him screaming in my face that I'm a Nazi apologist, then launching this big lie that I'd said Hitler was a Zionist. And then the General Secretary of the Labour Party suspends me without bothering to pick up the phone to say, had I said any of this? But we, of course, we now know this was nothing to do with anti-Semitism. It was de the d desire to get rid of the then Labour leader, Jeremy Corbyn. And in actual fact, the week I suspended, 80 Jewish Labour Party members published a letter in The Guardian saying in all their hundreds of years in the party, they'd never heard or seen anything anti-Semitic. And in all my I mean, 52 years since I joined the Labour Party, I only ever heard one racist comment. That was back in 1950, a white man who was one of our members complaining about the song Young, Gifted and Black. I mean, the simple fact is, if you're anti-Semitic or racist, you're not going to join the Labour Party because we've been a political homeland for the Jewish community for almost a century and all the other communities that have migrated here to Britain. Personally, how have you dealt with the the suspension, how did you deal with this thing happening to you? I mean, you were the proper, you know, the mayor of London, mm. the leader of the GLC, everyone loves mm. Ken Livingston, and then mm. to be suspended, mm. and then to resign as you did to help Jeremy, mm. well, how have you dealt with all this? Well, I, I didn't have a problem dealing with this because I've had, you know, four decades of lies and smears in the Tory media. Um, Back in 1981, on the day I became the leader of the Greater London Council, Thatcher made a speech to the Scottish Conservatives saying, my plan was to impose on Britain a communist tyranny like those of Eastern Europe. Now, until Thatcher made that speech, no GLC leader had ever been a national figure. No GLC leader had ever a press officer. You were never in the press. But the moment Thatcher made that speech, every Tory newspaper sent a reporter full-time into County Hall. And in the months that followed, there were more stories about me in the media than any other politician except Thatcher. And they were all lies. It wasn't I just being accused of being anti-Semitic. I was accused of being corrupt, alcoholic, violent, tax dodging. But, you know, I have had 40 years of this. I've got used to coping with it. And I always just say, well, if you're a genuine socialist, the right-wing media will lie and smear you. But in many other countries around the world, you'll be murdered by the establishment. And have you have you got any advice for uh, for comrades who are being suspended and, and expelled? I mean, do, and, and for people who are still in the party, do you think they should um, stick it out? Well, what what do you think that the future of the Labour Party is for people? Well, expelling so many people on all these not nonsensical accusations um, is bonkers. But I mean, we haven't got a really good honest system in which you can appeal against this because the NEC is dominated by the leadership that's been expelling everybody. And so it's almost just a waste of time uh, appealing for a hearing there. What I would say was, just because you're not in the Labour Party, it doesn't stop you being politically active. Get involved in all the campaigns that are going on, you know, defending our planet from the climate crisis, challenging all forms of racism and anti-Semitism. There's so many campaigns around issues you don't have to be any political party to be in them. And so you can keep active. Yeah. And um, how do you feel about the way that Jeremy Corbyn's being treated? You know, obviously have, he's not got the whip and um, there's rumours that he might not be able to stand as a Labour candidate in Islington. Mm. How do you think that's going to play out? Well, I think the interesting thing about Jeremy Corbyn is he, he was elected to Parliament in 1983. But because he was a genuine socialist, he was never given any role or job by any Labour leader. And then he stands the leadership and wins, and of course the establishment is appalled at that. They really fear, I mean, and with John McDonnell as his shadow chancellor, that if a Labour government was elected, it would crack down on all the tax dodging by giant corporations and the super rich. So they're desperate to get rid of him. And as I say, I mean, here we just have to put up with lies and smears. Much of the rest of the world, someone like Jeremy Corbyn gets assassinated. But I think he's coped with it very well, because like me, he's had you know, years of all these false accusations. Um, and you know, 
I hope that he will be allowed to stand as a Labour candidate. But if he doesn't get the, the Labour nomination, he should stand as an independent. And I suspect he will win a convincing majority because he served his local constituents I mean, for 30, 40 years. And they know how good an MP he's been, how many of their lives he's really helped. I mean, just going back on that, thinking about your time when you stood uh, against Frank Dobson, who was made the, the Labour candidate for mm. mayor. I mean, that was that was a pretty risky thing to do, but uh, it, it came out well. So do, do you think that's what people should do, should stand if, if they have to as an independent? Well, I had no intention of standing as an independent because Frank Dobson and myself have been friends since the early 1970s. And we were always on the same side as virtually every issue. Um, and he didn't want to stand for mayor. He wanted to carry on as the minister in charge of the NHS. But of course, Blair wanted him out because he was opposed to privatising the NHS. So he was basically forced to stand. And he was appalled at all the lies and smears I was getting from the, the Labour establishment and the ballot rigging. I mean, Labour Party members and trade unionists, 74,000 voted for me. About 24,000 voted for him, but he was declared the Labour candidate because the Blair's you know, new Labour gang just, you know, changed all the rules. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, uh, I just wanted to say that people who are watching this interview, I'm sure they'll be showing some signs of solidarity. Are you, are you going to try and get a, a, a laptop for Zoom at any time soon? Am I going to get a laptop? Yeah. No, I mean, basically, if I was going on the internet, I'd just be getting abuse and death threats every day. I mean, you look at the Labour MP, Diane Abbott, on her website, on average, every day, 10 death threats. Um, so basically, no. And also, I mean, from when I resigned from the party, I've just been, you know, an old age pensioner sitting at home doing the housework and the shopping and so on. Um, and, you know, if... I mean, I, I suppose there's always the possibility I might join the Green Party and campaign on climate change. Right. Well, um, on that, I think we can, we'll, we'll finish the interview. And thank you very much for um, letting us come over and, and uh, talk to you. And, well, it's uh, been a pleasure to be interviewed by you because from the moment I was accused of being anti-Semitic, I was banned from the BBC and ITV. And the only ever interviews I occasionally get is on Russia Today.